Good morning. Welcome to our services this morning. Whoa, it's already starting. So glad you could be with us this morning, either in, ser in service with us or on Facebook Live or seeing us later on Facebook Live. Hope you enjoyed the service today. Our pastor is out of town today. Um, so uh, well, we're going to have a great time in God anyway. Amen. 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 Uh, Amen. Who's got the scripture? I do. Linda's got the scripture. Good morning. The scripture is from Isaiah 54, 17. I bet everybody knows it. I'm going to read it. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And the righteousness is from me, said the Lord. The Heavenly Father, we thank you today yes. that we're able to meet together together to sing praises to your name and to worship. Lord, we ask that you bless Pastor Bill today as he brings the message. Bless every person that's listening that comes through the door. And let your will be done in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Worship with us.
Are you glad? Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. 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 At some point, it's going to come up. Um, when you guys are praying this week, remember to pray for our pastor. I think he's coming back home tomorrow. I'm thinking. I don't remember for sure. He just kind of went away for a quick weekend trip. Um, yeah, so I think he'll be back tomorrow. Thank goodness. Uh, this is a lot of fun one time, but uh, don't like to do it every week. It is really rough trying to play the piano and trying to lead and trying to sing. And, uh, we love you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Linda. <laughs> Come on. Uh, my tablet's not allowed to cooperate today. Yeah. All right. Awesome. I think I'm ready. <laughs> Again, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. It's good to see each and every one of you here. It's even good to see all you guys on, on Facebook land. Bring in one of those mirrors, I think one day I like, used to do for rock room and say, I see Billy and I see Sarah, you know. <laughs> uh, but um, I love God. I love the Lord. I thank Him for, for being here. I know there's a lot of people, a lot of countries, a lot of people in the world that can't go to church on Sundays. They uh, don't allow it. Excuse me, but my throat's really dry from trying to sing too. Uh, you know, and I think it's a great, great privilege that we can come to the house of the Lord and worship, worship Him in spirit and in truth, worship Him with our brothers and our sisters. Amen. Amen. Um, my sermon today is called Just in Time, and I'm going to be reading out of Acts 17, verses 24 through 31. Stand for the reading of God's Word, please, at Acts 17, 24 through 31. Acts. Acts, Acts. You there? Say amen. 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 Yeah. amen. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. It goes like this. It says, God, who made the world and everything in it, since he is, is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, since he gave to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of man to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their very pointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grow up for him and find him through all, though he is not far from each of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As also some of your own prophets, poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone or something shaped by the art and man's devising. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands that all men everywhere repent, because he has appointed a day to which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Amen. Amen. Sister Ethel, will you uh, take us to the Lord in prayer? Sister Ethel, will you pray? Are you talking about? Yes. I can't hear what? Will you pray? Oh, yes. Dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful for you gathered together. We are thankful that we can praise you in the open, that we don't have to hide. We pray right now that you open up our ears and our hearts that will be receptive to the word. And anoint Bill as he preaches today. Help us to be what you have us to be. Help us to glorify your name. And we ask all your name forever. Amen. 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 Be seated. I ran across this thing on Facebook, oh, probably a year or so. 
but I actually saved it as a, as a file to see it, so I could see it again. I was gonna actually put it on the screen, like Pass usually does, but um, didn't get here in time today. But it said, God's never late, we're just impatient. Amen? Yeah. How many times are we all late? I'm late. I was late this morning. I was like 20 minutes late. Everybody's kind of sitting around looking for me and waiting for me. Um, but I'm, I'm sure they were getting impatient because I wasn't here yet. But you know, God's always just in time. God is watching over us. I want to share a couple of personal incidences, four things in my office that remind me of how blessed I am. First thing, it's really an odd little thing. Carol, back when she was taking some doing ceramics, she made this little preacher man, and she called it me. His blue suit and everything. It's, it's a really cute little guy. And it's in my office, and I, I see that, and I, I see that, and I think of Carol, and I think of, of her doing that for me. Um, and I feel blessed. There's also a thing that my uh, that my cousin Carol, actually she's Carol's cousin, but Carol and everybody knows Carol from Alabama. Um, when we were down in Alabama uh, for Larry's, for her husband's funeral, Larry, she gave me this picture of Jesus um, on a kind of a kind of a brick type thing, kind of a rock thing. Um, and it came out of Larry's office, and she said he always had it on his desk. So I have that in my office. I have also on my desk a poem that my dad wrote me when I was a young man, and I also have. Uh, a uh, revelation that a young lady used to come here, uh, Marianne gave me when I was looking for a job about seven, eight, nine years ago. And those things remind me of how blessed I am. I know there's small little little things that probably don't mean a whole lot to anybody else. Probably when I die, somebody's going to come in and just throw it all out. But it means something to me. It shows me that people wanted to do something for me and put it to me. And they did it just in time. You know, when, when somebody passes away that's a friend of yours or a relative, you know, you want something to remember them. So every time I look at that, I, I remember Larry. Larry and I used to have some great discussions. I'd known him for, I don't remember how, when they got married. They got married not too long after us. We used to have some great discussions. We used to have some, uh, quite some great debates here and there um, because he had a very Baptist background and I had a very Pentecostal background. So we uh, had a couple of situations we didn't believe but we always had a good time together, and we always kind of listened to each other. Mary Ann's revelation for me, I just, I looked at that so many times, because it gave me encouragement at a time when I was down. It was just in time. Funny how God does that, isn't it? I recently have gotten a, a new job. I don't know if you knew that or not, but I was out of work since, uh, actually, out of work since May. I actually had a severance pay for a couple months, so that kind of took me through, and then uh, that's like, I don't know if I want to work or if I don't want to work. And I kept thinking, I gotta go to work. Carol kept saying, you gotta go to work, Bill. I don't want you around me anymore. <laughs> you see, uh, I'm, I'm one of those people that they call, well, she calls me a type A personality. I just figure out a micromanager. Um, for too many years, I was managing in restaurants so I was telling people what to do. So of course, with Carol, I didn't say, Carol, I don't like this. Carol, I don't want this. Carol, do this. Carol, do that. And uh, so she gets aggravated at me. So she, she's like, I'm sure that the reason I got this job is because she's probably praying really hard I got this job. <laughs> <laughs> but the first job that I got, well, about seven, eight years ago, that I, that I really liked, was with the company. And it's the one that Mary Ann prayed for me for. And it's, I was, only out of work for a couple months, but man, it was getting kind of tight money wise. You know how that is? Anybody ever been tight on money? <laughs> um, and I was getting really worried. And she came up to me and she gave me this scripture. She gave me a couple scriptures on this and she said that in prayer, God spoke to her and said, better than before. And you know what? That job was much better than before. Because I was making more money I ever made. I had a vehicle. Um, it, was just, it was just a great job. And then when that job, we had a contract. With the company with Franciscan when that when that job when that contract ran out, I was able to move into what I always thought was another perfect job for me, which was working in our knock and knock is a network operations center. So you sit there and you look at you sit in your office and you uh, watch for alarms and you fix things uh, when they when they uh, say that they're bad. And that was a good job for a while. And that company um, 
actually they bought out the first company I worked for, and they got to the point where they were uh, getting rid of a lot of math people and, and replacing them with what they call uh, offshore people. So that job kind of ended. And then I, like I said, I kind of took a little vacation through the summer. It was kind of a good vacation. I really needed it. Carol didn't. <laughs> Although she did like me to be around the house sometimes. And then, um, then um, I kept applying for jobs. I kept applying for one job that I thought I was going to be perfect for. And three times I applied for that job. Three times it turned me down. You know how that is? Oh, that makes it. It's like, I know what they want. I kept sending the letters, you know, saying I'd worked on this kind of PDF before, and, you know, this is what I've done, and, and it you know, rejects. And then finally this one job came up, and, and I called it. I actually applied to it, and the first thing you know, I got an interview. And I got another interview. And I got another interview. Yes, good. And uh, then about a week after I got, had my third interview, they called me up and gave me an offer. And uh, I thought, wow, this is really great because this offer was only a couple bucks an hour less than what I was making before. I mean, isn't God good? It's always just an offer. Amen. Amen. So many times we're, we're blessed because God's there just in time. A couple weeks ago when we were on our way to Wayne's, uh, Wayne's Memorial, Carol and I were driving to go pick up uh, Sister Ruth. And we got to uh, 73rd and something. And I had the light and I started going and this car decided to make a right hand turn into me. And I said, oh no, and I'm laying on my horn and they just keep coming. Luckily there wasn't anybody in the other lane. I was able to go around them and everything. I'm thinking, God had his hand on us. God really did it. Because otherwise we would have either been wrecked with that car or I would have hit somebody head on there. But he had his hand on us. Yeah. And he was just yeah. Yeah. About maybe even a quarter mile down the road, here comes the car back towards us. It's like, if that car would have been just a little bit faster or I was just a little bit slower, you know, but God works those things out. One of those things, other things God is just in time for is tithing. If you tithe, we found out the hard way sometimes that when you tithe, God honors that. You know, I'm not one of those guys that gets up here and preaches prosperity. You know, you get you, you give ten percent, and all of a sudden God's going to get fifty, eighty percent back. But when you take care of God, God takes care of you. Yeah. We found that when we tithe all the time, that God is really blessed. And he blessed us enough to where we could help other people out. And that's the whole thing we should be doing with our, with our money. Is besides giving it to God, and doing the things we need and or want, is helping other people out. Another time God was just on time is when my son had his very first operation. He was a born with heart defect. I think everybody here knows that. I don't know if everybody on Facebook does, but he had a heart defect. And Carol and I were really worried. He was um, first up at, uh, at Munster Community. Um, he was there, uh, I think it was the second week they opened neonatology. And after about a week, they shipped him up to Michael Reese. And they um, worked on him here and there, and they, they said, well, we're gonna have to, have to, we're gonna have to do the surgery on him. And so we had it all planned, we talked to the surgeon and everything else, and it was like six or eight months out when we were gonna, when we were gonna have it done. And like we went up there like the day of or the day before the surgery, and all of a sudden this other doctor comes in. Of course, it's a, it's a training hospital, so he's got tons of people with him too. And it's like he said, introduced himself. He said, "That's not the guy we talked to." Carol and I were like really upset. We just prayed and we prayed and cried. But then we decided that if God had done this, God had a reason. Yes. This surgery was one he. You know, the surgeon was supposed to have just come off vacation, or was this, I don't remember what it was exactly, but we, we felt that God had done this for a great reason, because God had his hand on the whole situation. Amen. He was just a time. God's always watching over us. Isaiah 40, 28 to 31 says, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faileth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. 
The young men shall utterly fail, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Just in time. I've had those times when I've just been so tired. It's like, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to, you know, that's I guess it's partially depression once in a while too, but but all of a sudden God comes in and gives me strength. Did you ever have one of those just in time moments in your lives? Jeremiah 29, 11, and 12 was always one of my favorite scriptures. I used to use it with the youth all the time. And uh, if you guys don't know that it's my favorite scripture by now, I don't know where you've been. But it goes like this. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. God has a plan for each and every one of us. I don't care how young you are, how old you are, what you've done in the past. When you start walking with God, he's got a plan for us. And his plan will always come about just in time. James 5, verses 7 through 11, and also 17 through 18 says, Therefore, be patient, brother, till the coming of our Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of, of the earth, waiting patiently for it until, until it receives the earthly or latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brother, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door, my brethren. Take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, and the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. God always has this way of working things out for just in time. We hear, we've read so many times about coming to the Lord. And if you don't think by now the coming of the Lord is, is really soon, just look around at what's going on in our world. Wars, political things going on, murders, murders in our streets, in all our cities. You know, if God doesn't come soon, what's going to happen to us? So I'm looking forward to that day that he, he splits that eastern sky and calls us home because I want to be there in that number. Amen. Amen. And I want to be there just in time because I know God's going to do it just in time. Look at Job's life. He had all those great things. And, and Satan, God allowed Satan to take these things away from him. Job never faltered. Job just kept pressing, pressing on and saying, I love the Lord. The Lord's going to take care of me. The Lord's going to take care of me. I've been in those situations where things have gone really wrong. I'm thinking, oh God, where are you? Do you not hear me? Do you not see me? I'm your kid. Why is this happening to me? But somehow, just in time, God comes along. Jobs, just in time, God comes along. I have to say about my job, too, I really like my job. Because I'm not in the house anymore. I'm actually in the hospital, and, and I get to see people. And I'm hoping that one of these days I can start really seeing people more. Because I see people, and I think it's just in time that God gave me that job. Although it would have been nice to be off in the summer. <laughs> he could have waited another six months. But <laughs> Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Think of the people waiting for three years for rain. But just in time, God gave him rain. Psalm 46, 1 through 3, also 10 and 11 says, God is our refuge and our strength, our very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, 
Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. God is our refuge and our strength. Amen. In Him is the love we need to trust. It says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Be still and know that I am God. Sometimes we try to do so many things on our own. And we just need to sit back and let God fight battles. We fight battles every day in our lives. As Christians, we fight a spiritual battle, whether we know it or not. Some days it may be just a mild thing that happens. Other days it may be something really strong. But we fight this battle. But God is on the waiting side. And all we have to do is just wait. And God will come just in time. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10 says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecution and distress for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Paul was writing to Corinthians. He, he'd uh, gone through so many things. But he realized that his strength came from God. His strength was, was, was bolstered up by God's presence in his life. His strength was, was given to him when he started praying and, and getting closer to God. Excuse me. God's grace is sufficient. Going through those dark times in our lives, God's grace is sufficient. Amen. Going through the great times in our lives, too, God's grace is sufficient. Sometimes we get so overwhelmed with, with greatness, and great, great things happening to us, we forget where those came from. They came from God. I praise God for both those great jobs I had. I had many jobs before that, and, you know, and always took care of me and took care of my family. But these last two jobs have been like really great jobs. Not that I didn't make good money before, because I made good money. But there's more to the job than just money. When I am weak, I am made strong. I like that that Paul said. When I am weak, I am made strong. We're made strong in him because he comes just in time. God gives us strength that we need when we need it. One of the things I mentioned to you earlier is that my dad had written me a, a poem. Uh, I don't say much about my parents. Uh, I didn't get along real well with my mom. Uh, she's kind of a different lady. Uh, my mom and dad got divorced when I was just a kid. I was probably five or six. And my dad moved away to Florida. But then for a brief time in my life, we were reunited. My mom moved out to Florida. And uh, we lived in Florida when I was, when I was in high school for a uh, freshman, sophomore, and part of my junior year. Um, it was a great time. You know, I got to sail, I got to surf, and I got to do all those nifty things. I had a lot of friends. But one of the things we were doing is, is we were looking for a house. And we found a house that we wanted. My mom had remarried my dad, by the way. And we were found a, found a house we wanted, and put an offer on it, and got rejected. Looked around for more houses, and if you know what, what it was like in, in the 70s in Florida, you know, houses were kind of hard to find. And every time we turn around, we put a, put a thing on a house, we get rejected. Finally, we got a house. But in the meantime, with all that happening, my dad wrote me this. He wrote me this on March 28th of 1969. Probably before, uh, <laughs> it was long before Karen was born. Uh, but it says, patience, my son, is a part of life. You will wait for things through all kinds of strife, from houses to cars and even cash. The things that you want never come with a dash. It takes time and work and worry too to do all the things that you want to do. Then sometimes they never work out, but the good Lord has a reason, don't you ever doubt it. He will give you what he thinks is good for you, and not a bit more, no matter what you do. You will get what you earn, even if you can't see it. Not always what you want will do it. 
for in this life, there's a reason for everything, even if you can't see one. But live every day the best you can, and if this one comes, be a man. And take them as, as a fact of life, and live this life the best you can. My dad, in his early years, was a Christian. He uh, got tied up with gambling and with alcohol. And uh, I'm sure he fell out at that point. That's about the time my mom divorced him. Like I said, he moved away when I was about five. I didn't see a whole lot of him. I get I get birthday cards and birthday birthday gifts from him and stuff. But when I was a teenager, we moved back down to Florida so she could remarry him. We've gone through my mom had gone through uh, living uh, being married to another man, and he was not a nice man. And so we moved down there. Thought it was going to be a great thing, and it was for me. I loved it down there. Um, when I tried to tried to when I got married, I tried to say, "Hey, Carol, let's move to Florida." She said, nope. But Carol, it's fun down there. You got sailing, and you got you got surfing, and you got swimming, and you got I don't like water. It's like okay. So we did the move. But when I was down there as a teenager, it was a great time, and I got to know my dad that I never really got to know before. And he was a even though he was an alcoholic at that time too, he was a very loving, caring person. I am. Um, was supposed to go and go into Miami and, and look at some furniture, I think it was. And he was supposed to go with me, and he worked the night shift. And he just didn't feel like going with me. So I took my mom's car and went up there anyway, down there anyway. On the way back, I had an accident. A bad accident on the expressway. I hit her car, I, I damaged her car, I hit three other cars. It was not pretty. And I came home and, you know, I, I, I got home and, and I was just, my mom, of course, was, because ah, that was her personality. My dad was, it'll be okay. It'll be okay, Billy. It'll be okay. I go, no, it's not. I'm going to go drive again. And so I said that. He gave me his keys. and said, we're going driving right now. So he took me back out in his car. And he cared that that happened to me. He cared that I was going to drive again. He, he, you know, he was a caring person like that. And it was just in time because I needed somebody that cared for me at that point. And my mom, not saying my mom didn't care for me, it's just my mom had a different way, you know. Unfortunately, I think I'm too much like my mom sometimes <laughs> because she was really worried about money, and I get worried about money. Carol can tell you. My bank, I get these little notices every once in a while that say we went below $100 in my checking account. We go, oh, it's, just, it's okay. I'll just transfer money from this account to this account. We're fine, we're fine. But Carol, we're, we're fine. Okay, I'll take your word for it. And we are. We've always been fine. But it's, uh, you know, I reacted like that. And that's how my mom was. My mom was very reactive. My dad was very loving. Now there's times when I'm very loving like that too. I'm not so reactive, but with my kids especially, there's I take more after her sometimes than I think to my dad. But I, I keep that on my desk to remind me that there was a good time in my life with my dad. My sisters and brothers tell me about the great times they had until until dad got all wound up with, with, with uh, drinking and with gambling. They were talking about what a great man he was and what a great Christian they both were. I didn't see any of that. Even when we moved to Florida, I didn't see that side of him because he's always drunk. He worked night shift. Before I go to school in the mornings, I had to go to the local tavern, pick him up, and take him home because he couldn't drive. That's the side I saw him. But then I saw this other side. So I keep that on my desk just to remind me that there's people out there that love me. I look at that little ceramic thing that Carol did. People love me and believed in me. I look at the Jesus thing that they care for me and say, these people love me. All those things come in my life sometimes just in time. When I get down and discouraged, just in time. I see those things. And that's God doing that for us. Ephesians 6, yeah, Ephesians 6, 
Timothy 13 says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of darkness, um, the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all, to stand. That's how we know God is there in the time for us. Because we know that there's things coming at us each and every day. When you commit your life to Christ, and I'm sure you guys have all experienced this, when you commit your life to Christ, there's things that happen that you go, why did that happen? But then you know, oh, God builds the out just in time. We lose loved ones, and you wonder why. But somehow God comforts us. And he's there just in time to comfort us. Sometimes we get sick. Sometimes we have issues. I can't walk. Although I've been walking 6,000 steps or more um, a day since I've been working. Praise God for that. I'm starting to lose a little bit of weight. Can't sit yet, but it still looks like I'm like nine months pregnant. But, <laughs> but uh, one of these days I'll be able to jump off this platform without worrying about breaking my leg. Uh, and I won't be jumping off any hay rides. <laughs> My pastor taught me that I don't jump off hay rides. And I'm looking forward to the day that I can run down this aisle. Because God's working just in time. You know, about the time you start getting old and fat and sassy, you know, I'm like all three of those old and fat and sassy. He does something that brings us to that point to where we can't be old and fat and sassy anymore. You know, he gives us, makes us do things like walking. You know, if, I, if it wasn't for working, I probably wouldn't walk. Carol kept saying all the time, oh, walk around the neighborhood, walk around the neighborhood. <laughs> I get down the end of the corner and it's like, no, I don't think so. I'm going back home. <laughs> That's not that big. I mean, we have, we're in a circle and we go around the circle three times, you've got a mile. Well, doing six thousand over six thousand steps, that's over three miles a day anyway. But I would have never got out of out of out of my chair in my office to, to do that. Just in time, God gave me this job. To get my energy back up, to get my feet back working. I mean I you know, I have a lead going to need to to really you know, when I preach sometimes I'll come up here and I'll kind of lean against the communion table when my feet get sore and my feet get tired. But God is so good. Amen. And I have always found him the big person to be there for just in time. Sister Ethel, will you come? I'm sure Sister Terrell feels feels really blessed with God taking care of them through this Amen. the hard stuff. You know, we all have things that sometimes we look at it, bad things happening, but sometimes we see something good coming out of it. And that's how great Amen. God is. That's how awesome God is. Look what the Lord has done, Ethel. Ethel, look what the Lord has done. I don't know. Stand with me. Sister Linda, will you come up and help so I don't broke the wheel yet? Yeah. You find it? Find it, you ready?
Amen. 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 You want to share with us? I just praise the Lord for my salvation. I praise the Lord for getting me through this open heart surgery. I yes. thank Him that He promised me in His Word He never leave me nor forsake me, yes. no matter what we go through. So I just praise Him and, and thank Him for my wife that she was there with me to carry me through all this. So I thank the Lord for all His blessings. <laughs> Spouses are awesome people, aren't they? Amen. I know a couple, a few weeks back, Jim and Stephanie were in a bad accident. God brought them through. You know? We can look back at all these things, you know? Susan, too, and, uh, and I know everybody, a lot of people around here had different issues. God's brought us through. Amen. Praise God. God's doing great work. I know it's kind of a weird service today. Um, it's always weird with me because I'm a weird person. <laughs> but uh, I figured I can take my liberty of being weird while the pastor's down in Florida. So yeah. <laughs> if he can be in Florida, I can be weird, amen? Amen. But uh, I love you guys. Anybody have anything else they want to share before we go? You want me to pray for? Come on down. You gather around with me? Come on, let's go pray. Father, right now, in Jesus, pray to God, you touch it, Lord. Pray to God, you touch this foot, Lord, that God, that you take away the pain, oh God. Yes. Father, we know, Lord, that you're able. Father, we know that by your stripes we are healed. Yes. God, we claim it right now in Jesus' precious name. Oh, Father, right now in Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, shut the Oh, you are the Oh, do a mighty work in Jesus' name. Father, we love that holy person. Thank you, God, for her, Lord, for dedication to you. Praise God for all this work in Jesus' name. Oh, give Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Just let it flow.
Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you for the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for this day. Yeah. God, we can come and worship you in spirit and truth. Pray that God keep your hand upon each and every one of us in our several ways. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, what's the last thing that you remember? Thank <laughs> you.